My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And today I have a super cute um, treat bag to share with you. It looks like, let me see if I can get it. There we go. Looks like this. So this is the You Truly Inspire Me Dad. This is a forest treat bag. I'm really not doing it any justice, am I? So let me just see if I can turn this around here. So it goes all the way around. Okay, and I'll get a better look of it, um, a better look at it on the table. But that's the project we're going to be doing today. Um, I am just going to show everything really quickly here. So. You can find me at stampingwithheart.blogspot.com. Um, if you are ever interested in checking out my blogs, I've really been working on developing that, um, and I would love to have you visit. Uh, the other thing is, I always mention it, but I just want to mention it again. Um, if you're not already part of my email list, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to ask you to join my email list if you're comfortable with that. Um, that is the first place where I announce going live and new projects and events and all of that lovely stuff. Um, so, okay, let me go ahead and get started here. But before I do, I wanted to share this with you. So, and you'll see this in the replay. Um, this spider, Patrick found a spider in our pool, and I am not a big fan of spiders, so I'm just going to show this to you. He originally posted this on Facebook um, after he discovered it. He almost put his hands on it when he was cleaning out the pool. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, is that the biggest, ugliest spider that you have ever seen. That spider is terrifying. <laughs> so, I am a city girl. I was born and raised in the city. I don't live in the city anymore. And I am not used to spiders of this size being around our home. So um, if you catch the replay, let me know. Do you even know what that spider is? Um, if you know the species of spider that is, let me know. And do you have spiders like that around your home or find those lurking around your water sources or pools or ponds or whatever uh, you have? I would love to know. Okay, so let me just take this down and we're gonna switch and we're gonna go to the table now. Okay, so this is the treat bag that we made last week. And this is the treat bag that we're gonna make today. But I did run into a slight problem with this. So I just wanted to mention this. Um, when I was creating my project, for today's live, I did not realize that this was the last piece of designer series paper um, for this particular treat bag, which really bummed me out. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna adapt a little bit and make the most of it. But I just wanted to before I take the scallop treat bag away, I just wanted to focus on the edging. So for this one, we did a scallop edge, and for this one, we're doing a forest edge to the treat bag. Um, super cute. This particular die, which looks like this. So it's an open end die, just the same as the scallop treat bag was. Um, and this one is actually from Mountain Air. Majestic Mountain Dies. Okay, so this is from the Majestic Mountain Dies. I think that the Mountain Air stamp set and the Majestic Mountain Dies are a great match for the Beauty of Friendship um, stamp set and then the beautiful tree dies here. So we're gonna be combining these together 
to make um, this treat bag or something similar to it. So just wanted to point out that edging and then we'll go ahead and get started making our treat bag. Okay, so in the catalog, I should have, um, here we go. Well, uh, that's lucky. Okay, so in our annual catalog from May 2021 to April 2022, if you go to page 10, 10 and 11, you will see the Beauty of the Earth suite, okay? And the suite involves the stamps, the dies, the designer series paper, all of which we're going to be working with here, um, and then also a 3D embossing folder. I don't actually have uh, the embossing folder myself, so I can't show that to you, but I have the rest of the pieces here. So we're going to be working um, with these. So this is a two-step stamp set, and then you can also cut this out with dies, and then it also has individual dies. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here. And let's talk about the designer series paper for a minute. So these are all of the uh, designer series papers, the patterns that you get in your paper pack. And I actually have to order another set. I should probably order a couple um, just to have them on hand. But I wanted to show you the pattern that I used on this particular tree bag is this one. So it's hard to tell here, but it's actually this piece. This was kind of like a darker edge that I trimmed out. But you can see it kind of has this pattern to it. And what I did, because you can see it better here on the back, you can see it also there on the bottom. Um, you can see here that I actually stamped the images right onto the designer series paper. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, what I was thinking about doing, and I haven't decided yet, I don't have a lot of time, do I? Now this is another designer series paper that I really like um, that you could use this for if you don't wanna do as much stamping. Um, and that is this piece here. And these are all, of course, double-sided. Um, but you definitely have a variety that you can choose from. This would actually also make a really good treat bag. And I have this pattern here. Um, but I wanted to try to recreate this as closely as I could. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. Now, the treat bag that we're making are the same exact measurements um, as the one that we made last week. So the only thing that is different is the die. So instead of doing the scalloped edge, you're going to do this forest edge. But yeah, so we're gonna recreate this. What I might end up doing is using this, this piece here so that I can recreate the effect and then doing another strip of paper at the bottom of the base of my treat bag. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. So for our tree bag, I already have it cut and scored. So it is 12 by 8. Now, if you have the full piece of designer series paper, you do not need a piece of white cardstock. I'm using the basic white cardstock because, one, it's a template. Um, but because I ran out of my full sheets, I'm going to back it onto this. And that's how we're going to make this. But again, if you have your designer series paper, you could just use that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this on, and I just want to see what my measurements are here. I'm going to get my paper trimmer. Here it is. The minute I start doing a live stream, I start covering all the things on my desk that I need. I have to stop doing that. Okay. There we go. All right. So this piece is four inches. So I need two more to get the bottom of the bag. Um, just trying to decide what other pattern I would like to use. And I think I'm just going to go with the bark. So let's just trim off two inches here. 
So I'm going to get my adhesive here. I'm going to use Stamp and Seal Plus. And I think maybe the smarter thing will be to just put it directly on the treat bag. All right, so here's the other side of the paper, uh, just in case you wanted to see the pattern. But I'm gonna line this up. We're gonna lay this down. Just get it as close as we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Try to get it as straight as we can. We're gonna be trimming off those edges. So here is that um, bark looking paper. I'm just gonna line that edge up there and lay that down. So this one is gonna be two-tone and this is going to become the bottom of the bag. All right, so here are our treat bag measurements. They're the same measurements as last week. I'm gonna score, so we're gonna go to the one inch. It's cut to 12 by eight. I'm gonna score at one inch. We're going to score at two inches. I'm going to score again at, let me just open that up. We're going to score at five and three quarter inches. We're going to score at six and three quarter inches. We're going to score at seven and three quarter inches. We're almost to the end here. And we're going to score at 11 and a half. Okay. And then we're going to turn our treat bag this way and we're going to do the two inch score line. So I'm just going to line that up with the two inch mark here and then everything below the two inch is going to become um, the bottom of the treat bag our little tags and we'll um, we'll cut those pieces out the tabs down here so before I get into all of the folding and the cutting we're going to do some stamping um, so let me just show you which stamps I'm working with we're going to be working with beauty of friendship here and then we're also gonna be working with Mountain Air. Um, so the die that cut the edge of the treat bag, this is the die here. That's actually from the Majestic Mountain dies, which coordinates with the Mountain Air stamp set and this stamp. So this is the stamp we're gonna be using first. I'm gonna be using the Old Olive Ink on our paper here and oh I know what I wanted to do I want to die cut the edge first and this is just what worked for me you guys can figure out what works for you but I found it was easier to line up this stamp when I actually already had the image die cut so that was a step that I forgot that I want to make sure I do but we're going to use the old olive ink and then here's our stamp this is a stamp that requires a longer um, clear block. This is clear block I. So, but before we do our stamping, let me go ahead and cut out that edge. So just gonna line this right up with the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it to be able to go smoothly through the machine. Where that little line is here, I'm going to just match it up and do it again. And you want all of your points to the edge of the paper. So here, uh oh. So this is the thing. Now, if you're working with designer series paper only, you will not have to worry about that getting caught. It was because I layered it. Um, 
because I ran out of paper, but it's okay. It's going to be funny. So let me just pull that out. Now this is going to be our tab here. So I can actually trim off this edge. And that actually lined up pretty well. So I can take that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redo this little edge over here. Let's see if that worked. Yay! <laughs> we got it. All right. So we'll come back to that. So here is our edge. I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper. So I tested my edge with a piece of scrap paper before I started on this. Um, and let me, you guys should be able to see this just fine as we start stamping. Okay, so I'm gonna take my old olive. Here we go. There's that, and old olive. I pulled out a couple of greens, and this was the one that won. I also used a little bit of evening evergreen too. So I'm just gonna ink up this stamp because this is a larger stamp. I'm just gonna lay this down and ink it this way. You guys can let me know how you like to ink up the larger stamps. Okay. And so with the first row, we're gonna line it up exactly. And the whole idea was basically just to get like some perspective um, on the tree layers. So just like this here, where the, just we do a couple of rows before we get to the big trees. Okay. Now, because we're not working with a full green sheet, I probably won't do as many, but we'll be able to do a couple. So we're just gonna line this up. And See how much easier that is, like when it's already been die cut? Okay. And then I'm just going to lay that down. And then stamp. I would definitely apply some pressure across just because it's a larger stamp. But this is also a forgiving stamp. So if it doesn't go down 100%, you can pretty much layer these pretty easily. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, we're going to have a couple of gaps. And I'll show you what I did with the gaps. So I'm just going to ink that again. So same thing, I'm going to line these up. And so for here, here, and here, I'm going to do just a little fill stamping. So I'm just going to take a little section here inked and then And then I'm going to do the same thing here and then on the other end. Okay. And that one will be covered, that tab, so you really won't even be able to see it. It should all start to blend. So from here, I just started alternating. So I kind of go down to where the edge of the stamp is and I just do another row. All right, and then you can sort of see how that tree line is coming together. And especially with the front of the tree bag, you can be pretty, 
you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be covering it with some die cut pieces. Okay. We'll do one more. Well, actually, we're kind of running out of room um, with the green. So why don't I skip to our big tree? So the big tree is what we were working with um, the last time we worked with Beauty of Friendship. This is a two-step stamp. So this, the one that's stained pink, this is the large uh, base stamp for the tree. And then this is the detail. So we're going to do this in Old Olive and we're going to do this in Evening Evergreen. And I'm basically just going to go right across. Almost to the other side. Now with this one, um, so here I actually did do some extra stamping, like where we have the green here, um, just because it was like so perfectly lined up, I wanted it to look a little bit messier. So it's up to you if you want to have that perfect tree line or if you want to kind of make it look a little bit more um, nature-y. So you'll see here, I didn't get the full ink of the stamp, but we're going to go over it with the detail part anyway, so it's okay. Now what I'm going to do is, you could just do the tip, but I'm going to go in with the whole tree and see if I could do a little overlap here. We're going to do that detail stamp side. So we're going to work with this side now. I'm going to unfold that tab. I think that's why I'm not getting a clean, um, I think that's why I'm not getting a clean stamp here, but it's okay. So So we have two trees. We have like this big die cut tree and then we have this smaller die cut tree. So let me show this to you here on the chart. So it's this piece, this piece, and that piece make one big tree. And then I have this one. No, I actually use this one. I use the more triangular one with this um, tree trunk. And then I manipulated this to fit this. So I'll show you what I did. But I thought it just made it look so I don't know. It looks very like lushy forest, which was what I was going for. So we're going to do that again. So let me just show you the pieces here. Now, this is um, the early espresso cardstock. And then you could also do it in this bark um, designer series paper. So here's what that looks like. I just wanted to show you the difference. If you're using one or the <laughs> look at my <laughs> look at my inky hands. Okay, so that's early espresso cardstock, and this is designer series paper in the bark pattern. And if you look closely on here, I put one of each. So you could see the early espresso and that. So it makes the trees just look a little bit different. So we have our tree bases. We'll just redo our trees. Um, so I'm gonna use a different green. I'm gonna use this designer series paper and we're gonna cut our tree base and the actual pattern from the same piece, meaning the outline die, and then also the detail die. And then I'm gonna cut this triangular one too, and we're gonna cut that one more time. So we're gonna actually cut that twice. So you'll see the way that that cuts out and these pieces start to fall out here. Let me see if I can get that out without my, yeah, I got it. Without our take your pick tool. Okay. So let me, um, we're gonna have to start assembling our treat bag here, but I just wanted to show you, 
I kind of just did tone on tone, like literally the same paper with the tree. But if you want it to be more distinct, you could use a darker, you know, a darker color in the background. So it's going to be the base, your tree trunk and branches, and then your overlay piece for the big tree. And then for the little tree, we'll do, we'll do the same exact thing we did on this where we have the early espresso on this one, and then this one's a little bit of a lighter tree. So that one goes here. And then what we'll do is we'll take this and we're just gonna trim this so that it fits this tree just a little bit better. Um, and then we'll have our two trees here. So we're just gonna set these aside for a minute so we can start to assemble our treat bag. I'm gonna get my paper snips. And this is where we start having some fun with this. So we're going to find that half inch piece and I'm just going to trim that off. We don't need the bottom of the half inch piece at all. Okay. And then because this is becoming our tab, we can actually trim that. And then we're going to follow these score lines here. I hope I can get this bag to fold properly since I re-scored it. Should be okay. So at the three and three quarter inch section, we're gonna cut. And then we have a two inch section here. So we actually scored one inch and one inch. We're gonna ignore that middle score line and we're gonna actually cut at the two inch mark here. Just right up to the other score line. And then this is our other three and three quarter piece here, which I'm having a hard time seeing on that side. So I'll trim it here. I flattened it when I, when I ran it through my die cutting machine. Okay, so we can see our tabs a little bit better now. And put this paper down so you guys can kind of see this as I'm doing this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start mitering and trimming. Um, we don't need the big tabs to be full. So I'm just going to trim off about a quarter inch. That's going to be our the base of our bag, just like the last one. And then just light mitering doesn't have to be like really deep in our cut. And that's just to give it some stability. Now these little two inch flaps that we have, we can actually cut these in half. And then I'm just gonna miter there and miter here. Okay. Same thing with this one. I'm just gonna trim about a quarter off this larger tab. And then I'm gonna miter this just slightly on that side too. So all of our sides will get mitered that we cut. Okay. And then this last one, we can also cut this two inch one in half and then miter there and there. That one looks a little bit weird, I'm gonna redo that. There we go, okay. We'll just get those pieces out of the way and you can see those tabs now. Um, let me see if that looks better, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start folding at the score lines now. I've never done this with designer series paper layered on top of it, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Just warming that up and then I'm gonna fold that over. Looks pretty good. Same thing, just warming it up. And then I'm going to fold. Here's our tab. Fold that one. Okay. And then here I have these little creases 
this is where we scored at the one inch marks so that we can have those little creases in our bag like that. So I'm just gonna warm those up a little. Okay. And now we can adhere our tree bag at the corner and then we'll do the bottom. So the one thing I will say is that I would probably color the edge of this to match. I don't have my Stampin' Blends out here, but I'll probably end up coloring that green and coloring that a little bit brown just so that it blends and you don't see that big white line like that. That would drive me a little bit crazy, but that's just me. Um, I'm gonna use my tear and tape for this. You can also use your Stampin' Seal Plus. Don't use the regular seal on the treat bag. You're gonna need something more durable than that. And just line this up now. I'm gonna focus on the score lines at the base of the bag. And then you can see where that lines up at the top of the bag too. And then for the inside, when you're folding that down, I got a little ink here. I mean, no one's gonna see it, but I would probably actually seal it that way. So let me, I'm gonna do this in layers. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the bottom tab here. In case you couldn't already tell. All right, and then same thing. I'm just gonna kind of press it in from the top. So this is gonna be the front of our treat bag and we can start putting our pieces on now. So what I did was when I was kind of like alternating these and lining these up, this one's gonna come off of the bag a little bit, which is okay. And they overlap a little. So let's just take a look. I'm just gonna lay them out first, see how we're looking. So here are these two. Okay, and this one came down and touched like the bottom of the bag on this version. And it kind of blends in with the bag here, which I didn't really think about. Um, what do I want to do about that? I'm gonna switch it out. I'm gonna make it the dark. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna switch it out for the darker just so that it stands out a little bit. How about that? That seems like the easiest and the quickest solution. Um, so for this part here, I forgot to mention the alphabet dies, which I will in a minute. I already have another one of these, You Truly Inspire Me, and this is actually from the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. So this one here. And then this. I'm just looking for my little rectangle guide. Here it is. So this is the rectangle die that actually coordinates with the bundle here. Okay, so that will cut out your sentiment. It's a really tight fit, but it looks really cute. And then this is the longer rectangle, just depending on the sentiment. And this is the one that I actually, like I accidentally ran over it with another die and it, it survived. Can you believe that? Can you see those dents? I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Um, but we can do, you truly inspire me. Now, I wanted to mention this because I set aside the DAD and I don't know where I put it. I thought it was here with my other dies, but it's not. So the one thing I wanted to mention about if you're going to customize this, I actually did pull in another die set, the Playful Alphabet dies to make the dad sign. Um, but I'm not going to do that with this one just because I don't have those ones out here. I could do father or something like that, but it would take so long for me to find, sort those all out and cut them that I'll just, we'll just go with the one um, and we'll just do like a, you know, you truly inspire me and we'll add our little birds. So uh, we're going to put these on. So let me do that. And then I'm going to trim this down. So what I did with this was I basically just kind of lined it up 
until it looked right to me and trimmed it. So I think I like that side better. And then I just kind of edged this off of here. And you guys can, you know, do whatever. I tried to make it look, you know, wispy, like, like the dye itself, but I don't know if I pulled it off exactly. Um, but it's, it, it blends in pretty well, like when you have them layered. So, you know what I mean? Like you can't really tell, right? You just trim that off a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and put this piece down first. But I ended up cutting them like this. So almost like little, not quite triangles, but little half pieces here so that I could kind of fit them in between the branches. Okay. And then here, if you look on the back, there are some darker areas, uh, not darker, um, thicker where you can hide these pieces behind. So there's one. And I can position that so that you can't see it on the other side. So I'm just gonna set a couple of these down. I can't remember how many I did on the last one. I want to say it was like four or five. I feel like that's going to show. Let me see. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, that, that hides it. So I'm just going to lay this right over top. Put this random piece over here that I bent. Goes the other way. It's a good thing about being two-sided. You can tell which way it goes. And that just gives you a little dimension on that one. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing with this piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, you truly inspire me. This one's a little more general. And then let's die cut our little birds. Now this one you can actually use with your mini cut and emboss, but I have the big guy out here. So we'll just use the big guy again. And I'm gonna set a little piece of the Pacific point down. Here are my two little, we'll cut two at a time. And then we'll put down the plates and cut. And here they are. And I'll show you, I actually, um, you could use your, you know, your stamp of lens or whatever you want. I have a Sharpie out here. I keep moving my craft space back and forth because I cannot, no matter what I do, I can't get the lighting right. And basically I think I need to just invest in different lights, but um, I ended up just grabbing a Sharpie and coloring in their eyes. So you'll see, and I don't want to bring this too close, but it actually gives like an eye impression on the bird. And I'm literally just dabbing the Sharpie right onto the eye. Okay. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and we can do, um, We'll position our birds just in a little slightly different spot here. You guys can see which one you like better. Okay, there's that one. 
and then we'll do this one up here. Okay, so slightly different, but this is our other treat bag. Okay, so the lesson for me is always buy two designer series paper packs because especially with a nature pack like this, I know I'm going to use it so much. I should just automatically have more than one. Um, but it's nice to kind of see the alternates. So your two-tone designer series paper versus just the, the one whole sheet. Um, but the big difference between this one and the one from last week was we basically, um, oh, thanks, Kathy. I'm glad you like, oh, God, sorry about that. Um, it squeaked on the table there. The, the big difference between the scalloped edge treat bag from last week same measurements as this one. And then the tree line tree bag is that we only decorated the front and the back, right? I should put, I should put a panel back here. That was bothering me. I feel like it needs another panel. Um, but we left the sides basic white. So if you're going to do your cardstock like that, you can only decorate the front or the back. But for this one, it's continuous. So it's all the way around. It's lots, it's lots of fun stamping and playing. Like this is a good project if you wanna just really stamp it out. There's there's a lot of ink on this. Um, and then you can get an idea of your two-tone with this side too. Now, the other thing that I discovered, and I just wanna tell you guys so that you know, you know better than me. I know nobody's looking but me, but it bothers me. I did this upside down. So can you see those trees on the inside pattern are upside down? So, the next time around, I would turn the paper around and score it the other way so that at least the inside trees would be the right side up. Now you're gonna have a gift in here, you're gonna have tissue paper in here, you know, whatever you're gonna be gifting um, dad or grandpa or, you know, whoever the special person is. But I wanted to, I wanted to mention that because I was like, oh, why wouldn't I have looked at the way that it looked on the inside too? So with the basic white, you don't have to worry about it. This is our cardstock. Now, the other thing about these is that with this one being cardstock and this one being designer series paper, this one is much weightier and this could hold something heavier. With your designer series paper here as your actual like gift card, uh, your actual like treat bag, you would want to do something a little bit lighter. Like don't put something super heavy in this one. Um, it, you know, you can do your, you know, food gifts if you're baking them something or if you're getting them their favorite like seasonings or accessories or whatever, it would still go in here. Um, but if you're going to put something a little bit heavier in there, like if it was going to be a watch or some, you know, which would fit in here, um, you would want to do that with a cardstock uh, base, I, I would think anyway. So, all right, that's it for tonight. Um, thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I really appreciate it.